Now I'm often asked, what does a quadratic graph look like? Well, this is the purpose then of this tutorial, just to give you some kind of understanding. Now, any quadratic graph is going to be of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b and c are constants and a doesn't equal zero. So for instance, you're going to be looking at things like y equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. You don't have to have a value for x or a value for c, as long as your a value, as I say, isn't equal to 0. So for instance, you could also have like y equals x squared, or you could have a is a negative number. And if a is a negative number, say minus 1x squared, you could start off with minus x squared, but we tend not to, we tend to put it the other way around. Something like say 6 plus 2x minus x squared. Now, when we plot or sketch a quadratic graph, we can get an idea what shape the graph's going to look like just by looking at the value of a. I mean, for instance, we should be familiar with the basic quadratic graphs, let's just draw them over here. Let's have that as the x-axis and that as the y-axis. Now you should be familiar with y equals x squared. It's a graph that looks like this, okay? A parabola, a u-shaped parabola. And when we look at minus x squared, it's this u-shape inverted, reflected in the x-axis. So you're going to get a graph looking something like this. So this one up here is the graph of y equals x squared, and this is the graph down here in green of y equals minus x squared. So what I'm trying to say then is that if a is positive in any one of these, then you could expect to see a parabola which is u-shaped, okay? And if it's negative, then you can expect to see it shaped like this. So we'll just write that in for you. So when a is greater than zero, a positive value, expect to see this. When a is a negative value, expect to see this. So this graph and y equals x squared, which I've drawn over here, would both be u-shaped, but this one would be this kind of N shape, okay? Now, for a parabola, parabolas always have a line of symmetry. And that line of symmetry is always down through the middle here, okay? And through here in that example. And the points at which it dips here or peaks here, that's known as the vertex. Now, suppose then we're asked to sketch a parabola. Let's just show you how I would go about it. Suppose we're asked to sketch, say, the parabola y equals x squared plus 2x minus 8. Now, what I can see is that it's a positive a term, 1x squared, a is greater than 0, so it's going to be u-shaped. I'd also want to know where the quadratic graph crosses the y-axis. All quadratic graphs cross the y-axis, and you can achieve that when x is 0. So when x is 0, what would y be? Well, y would be minus 8, because this term would be 0, this term would be 0, just leaving you with y equals minus 8. So, so far then, I know that I've got a u-shaped curve, our parabola, and it's going to cross the y-axis at minus 8. So just mark that point there as minus 8. Now I'd want to see if the graph crosses the x-axis. Not all quadratic graphs cross the x-axis, but if they do, then that would be the point where y equals 0. Okay, any point along the x-axis, y always equals 0. So I would try and find out if that was the case by saying when y equals zero. And that would mean that our equation here, x squared plus 2x minus 8, has to equal zero. 
Now, quite often, you'll find that this equation could factorize. It might be given to you in a factorized state. If you were to factorize it, it turns out to be x plus 4 multiplied by x minus 2, and that will equal 0. And if it factorizes, then it's very easy to see that x plus 4 or x minus 2 must be equal to 0, and that would lead to x equaling minus 4 or x equaling 2. Now that's the case when it factorized. If it didn't factorize, then you could always try out the quadratic equation. Remember, x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. And then you might get the roots, as we call them. But then that equation might not solve at all, in which case the graph would not cross the x-axis at all. But if, as I say, the equation that you've got factorizes or is given to you in a factorized state, okay, suppose they said y equals x plus 4 times x minus 2, then you could easily see where the graph crossed the x-axis. So I'm going to add that to my graph. Minus 4, I'm just going to say minus 4 is here, and if that's minus 4, 2 will be about there. And notice how I'm saying about. You don't have to have it exact, it's only a sketch. And you also don't have to have the x-axis with the same scale as you have the y-axis. So at this point, I know that the graph is u-shaped. It passes through minus 4, 2 on the x-axis and minus 8 on the y-axis. So what's it going to look like? Well. Don't make the common mistake. I often see this being done, where people draw a U-shaped graph, comes down like this, okay, then through the minus 8, like that, and then up through the 2. And they make this point the lowest point. Clearly it's not going to be that. Remember I was saying to you that the parabola has a line of symmetry. And you can clearly see that the y-axis is not the line of symmetry. It's not equally displaced either side of the y-axis. You've got two units this side, four units to the left. The line of symmetry is going to be between, at the midpoint, between minus 4 and 2. So it's going to bottom out at that lowest point. So we wouldn't want to draw a graph like that, so we'll just remove that. So what is it going to look like? Well, it's going to come down through the minus 4, go below the minus 8, maybe not that far down, dip below it, come back up through the minus 8, and then up through the 2. Now, this is only a sketch. It's not necessarily um, a good graph, but at least I haven't got it bottoming out at the minus 8 here. So where is this line of symmetry? Well, it's located, as I said earlier, at the midpoint of where it crosses the x-axis, somewhere here. And to get that midpoint, all we need to do, let's just come out here and we'll write it in. That midpoint is worked out as being the mean of these two points. Just add the two points together, minus 4 plus 2, and divide by 2. And that comes to minus 1. So your line of symmetry then is going to come down through that point, which is now at minus 1. And this point at the bottom here, okay, is the vertex. Let's just put that in that that point there is the vertex for this particular parabola. And what is the equation of that line of symmetry? We're often asked that. Well, that equation's got to be x equals minus 1. It's vertical, it's passing through the point minus 1. So this is x equals minus 1, the line of symmetry. Just write that in, okay? And as for the coordinates of this vertex, all we need to do, we know the x-coordinate is minus 1, we need to get the y-coordinate, and we can put minus 1 through our equation here. So when x is 
minus 1, you're going to get minus 1 all squared, which is 1, plus 2 times minus 1, which is minus 2. 1 minus 2 is minus 1, and then minus another 8 is minus 9. So the coordinates of that vertex are going to be at minus 1, minus 9. Just below, as I say, the minus 8. Now, it's not the only way that we can go about sketching quadratic graphs. What we could do is, if possible, look at completing the square. And I'm assuming that you're familiar with completing the square. Let's just write this down here, completing the square. It's quite often a good technique to use. You'll find tutorials on completing the square on my website. Just look in the index or under the examination board that you might be following. And uh, if we're given then the curve y equals x squared plus 2x minus 8, if we were to complete the square for this, remember we just write a bracket like this, all squared, and we halve the coefficient of x. This is 2, so we halve it and it will be plus 1. And if we square this out, we would get x squared plus 2x plus 1. Looks very similar to this. But because we've already got plus 1, I need to subtract 9 off of that plus 1 to bring it back to minus 8. Now, when you've got it in the completed square form, and as I say, I've done tutorials on this, on sketching graphs from the completed square form, but just briefly, what we do is we set up our axes, just something like this, okay, and we look at one graph in particular, graph f of x equals x squared. And this graph would look, as we've seen, like this one up the top here, something like this, okay? f of x equals x squared. But then, if we were to look at replacing the x with x plus 1, then we've got a new graph, f of x plus 1, which is going to be to replace the x here with x plus 1. That'd be the graph of x plus 1 all squared. And we should be familiar with what this transformation does. Again, if unsure, just look under transformations on my website. But it takes this graph and moves it one place to the left. So you're going to get a graph, a parabola, looking something like this. With this point here now at minus 1. Sound familiar? We had minus 1 up here, didn't we? Now to complete this, we just look at the new graph now, f of x plus 1 and then minus 9. And what this does is that it replaces the x in f of x with x plus 1. So we've got x plus 1 all squared and then minus the 9. And putting minus 9 at the end of this function just means that this graph drops, translates downwards 9 units. Then if we were to draw this, we're going to get a parabola which is going to be this one. It's going to just drop down by 9 units. So we're going to get it bottoming out down here at minus 9, then coming back up through minus 8 on the y-axis, something like that. So this point here would be at minus 8. This point down here, the vertex of the parabola, will be at minus 1, minus 9. And clearly the line of symmetry, you can see, will be the line x equals minus 1. So you've got this method then, completing the square method, which is available to you as well for curve sketching of quadratic graphs. So I hope that's given you some insight, okay, on how we can go about this curve sketching for quadratic graphs. Okay, 